good evening, uh, my name is Rob Pollard, this is a, uh, a short video to go over some of the uh, kits that I, I take with me on my walks just to show you the kind of stuff I take with me on the hills. Uh, I've got a rucksack that's packed pretty much the way it would be as if I was going hiking. There are a few items of kit missing in terms of food and that because I tend to buy that at the last minute but I can still show you a few bits and bobs on that front. Um, what we'll do first, I'll, I'll start off by uh, going over the external kit, uh, the, the kit that I wear and the kit that I carry with me. Um, the stuff that I actually wear, I tend to use uh, lightweight uh, trousers. Now these ones are uh, RAB uh, Alpines, I don't even get them anymore. Uh, the key to these trousers, unlike uh, standard trousers that you find people wearing, is that they dry exceedingly quickly and are very lightweight. It, if I get soaked by rain, these will be dry in about 10 minutes easily uh, once uh, the sun comes out. Um, unlike other hikers, I never take any uh, spare clothes with me. Uh, the reason why is I carry lots of different layers and I can uh, interchange various layers as and when I need to uh, in order to stay warm and dry. And also the way I look at it, if your kit is wet, you're better off having it dry on you rather than getting out some more kit and having that get wet as well. It's kind of almost pointless, so I only ever take um, one set of clothes. So that's the trousers. For top, I tend to use, it's another lightweight item, these are Rab um, Aeon uh, tops. Uh, they're made of a special wicking material that uh, means that all your sweat uh, gets uh, basically wicked out into the atmosphere so it never gets wet from your exertions. Uh, extremely lightweight, there's almost no weight to these at all. Uh, and the thing that I like about uh, the, this particular set is the sleeves. Um, they, they can be worn uh, like a t-shirt and they do stay there even if you're climbing or doing other things or if it gets a little bit colder you can roll the sleeves down so uh, very handy. Uh, and in the summer that's pretty much all I tend to wear, uh, unless it, it's starting to rain. Uh, other items of external kit that I take with me. Uh, I have a, a ProTech uh, watch, um, which is specially made for hiking. Uh, it has a lot of uh, handy functions. Uh, firstly, it it's, always has an accurate time, because it uses atomic clocks for synchronisation and time, especially for me, because I use public transport to to, to leave an area, uh, it's very important that I leave at the right time. Uh, other features of this has a built in compass, uh, should my other navigation aid, aids fail. Has a barometer, again, uh, should other navigation aids fail. And more importantly, the, the barometer in this uh, will display uh, uh, changes in air pressure as a, a chart over time. And it's very handy because I can just glance down at my wrist and immediately see. Uh, what the weather is likely to be doing, whether it's likely to get worse, get better, or, or whether it's fairly static. And it's good to have a heads up. So it's a very handy uh, watch to have. Other items of external kit. I always take a whistle with me. Uh, it's the old six blasts in an emergency. I used to have a, uh, a metal whistle, but the problem with metal whistles is in the extreme cold, uh, metal sticks to you, which obviously isn't very good, so I've since gone plastic. I normally have this hanging around my neck because at the end of the day if you have a fall uh, and maybe lose your rucksack at least you'll have your whistle. Now some people, uh, especially new hikers, don't see the point of having this but the bottom line is uh, you can only shout for so long and then your vocal cords get basically knackered out and you, you can't, it's very difficult to throw your voice whereas you can blow all day long on a whistle to attract attention so a very handy item to have if you ever find yourself in dire straits. So I'm a, an old paper map kind of a guy uh, with a compass. So I, although I carry electronic navigators, I'll come on to that later, uh, my primary navigation is by, by paper maps. Uh, my, my current map holder I use is an outdoor designs one. Uh, I've been through loads of these. Uh, normally they kind of last like one or two walks and then fall apart so I do treat them quite roughly. Now this one I've had for more than a year now and admittedly one or two holes are starting to develop. 
but it's it survived far better than all the others. And this is normally always hanging around my neck, and uh, I always have the map available. Uh, so I'm uh, one of these hikers with a, a really poor sets of directions, so I'd like to have a map with me at all times. So that's the map case. Uh, other external items. <coughs> Navigation aids I mentioned earlier. I always have two navigation aids on standby. Uh, the first is a, a Cento compass, uh, a superb compass. It has uh, lots of features. Uh, the things I like about it, the needle is very strongly magnetised, a lot better than some other compasses I've used. It's also world balanced as well, uh, which means you, you can use it all over the world pretty much. But the feature I really like is underneath there's an adjustment screw so the idea is you look up the uh, magnetic variation for the area you're hiking in and you can actually dial in that variation before you start your walk so it means that when you're out hiking you don't have to bother with all the cumbersome adding and taking away uh, the, the uh, declination of the uh, magnetic variation it's kind of built into the compass once you've uh, dialed it in so that's a very handy feature uh, and I find that the um, the outside dial is wide enough that it's easily easy to use with gloves on, and I like the large luminous plate on it as well. It's really handy at night, so really like that compass. A little bit heavier than some other compasses, but I, I, I much prefer this one. The other item of uh, the navigation aid that I have is a Garmin uh, GPS uh, 62S. Um, these days, I very rarely use it for navigation. I might occasionally glance at it uh, to confirm position, uh, but it, it's, it serves two primary jobs uh, on my walks. Firstly, it helps record my walks, and uh, especially if I've been locationally challenged, I, I enjoy going back home and, and getting this out and seeing exactly where I went wrong, uh, as I uh, sometimes do. Um, uh, the other reason why I carry this uh, is to prevent embarrassment really. Um, uh, my biggest fear when I'm out hiking uh, alone is putting myself in a situation where I have to call out uh, mountain rescue or, or, or people like that uh, and if it was because I was misplaced uh, I, I think I would quite literally die of embarrassment so I, I always take a, a proper GPS with me and then that way uh, should my map and compass navigation fail or if I need to check up on anything specific I can just pull out the Garmin and off we go. Now uh, because I hardly ever use it on the walk um, I found like my last trip to Scotland which was I think four five days this lasted the entire trip on one set of two AA lithium batteries which is really good uh, so uh, a very handy gadget it's also a handy gadget for when you're starting off hiking. Uh, when I first started, because I wasn't uh, that strong navigator with a map and compass, I used to set this up so that it would essentially make ringing noises every time I hit a, a waypoint. And uh, I'd keep walking. If I didn't hear a ringing noise for a while, to get out the GPS and find out where I went wrong. But uh, as the years have gone by, I've found that it's rarely used now. But I will never uh, go on a hike without it. It's it's, it's too handy a piece of kit to have. Other items uh, carried externally uh, in the right hand pocket of this rucksack. Now, the rucksacks, I'll go over it. It's an Exos uh, 58 uh, Osprey rucksack. Incredibly lightweight. It weighs in just over a kilogram empty, which for a framed rucksack is, is very light. It has lots of outstanding features. I'm not going to go uh, over them all now. I actually have a review up on my website for it so you can always read up about its features there. Uh, in terms of what I stow on it and the external pockets, on the right is always my water bottle. And the reason why is there's a hole here and when I'm walking I can actually pull out the water bottle and drink from it whilst I'm walking and then when I finish I just tuck it back in again. Uh, in terms of water bottles, I always drink from a filtered water bottle, uh, even in places where perhaps it's not needed. Uh, and the reason why is, uh, as a solo hiker, I can't afford to get ill. Uh, uh, being seriously ill would be a very bad thing indeed. So when it comes to water, I take no risks whatsoever. 
uh, in my case I, I use a travel tap. The, uh, the travel tap, I, I've used this in some really dire looking, um, uh, some really dire looking water and I've always got away with it uh, scot free. I've used this in puddles, all sorts of uh, places that you'd look at and you think there's no way I'm drinking from there but this really does uh, do the trick. So a very handy piece of kit, I, I never leave home without it. Um, even when I'm in camp I'll use this filtered water bottle to fill up uh, my other collapsible water bottles which I'll show you later. Uh, so uh, the end result is any water that I drink throughout the hike it's always filtered. I'll never drink unfiltered water. So a very important piece of kit. Uh, other items I carry externally are hiking poles. Um, now, hiking poles are fairly new to me. I, I used to think they were more of a fashion statement than anything. Um, but when I started, uh, I guess, climbing some of the higher mountains, I, I was finding that on descending them, I'd get to a point where my knees just turned to jelly and the actual knee joints would hurt really badly. Uh, and in some cases, it would really affect my walking performance. So. I've been told that hiking poles relieve that, so uh, Mountain Warehouse kindly lent me a, a set to review and I was so impressed with them that I went out and bought my own. Now these are um, black diamond uh, carbon corks, uh, they're made of carbon fibre materials so they're incredibly light uh, and for steep descents they are absolutely superb. I, I, I've done well, I've, I've climbed down off Ben Nevis with these and not had any problems in the knee department whereas uh, in the olden days that would have uh, really killed me. Uh, the other big use for these is for fording streams. Uh, the problem with streams, a lot of them have fairly high currents even if it doesn't look like it from the side which can quite easily sweep you away. The, these poles will help you uh, stay upright. Uh, and a lot of these streams are very slippery stream beds as well and again these uh, will, will prevent you from slipping. Uh, and the other thing is um, you can probe ahead when you're in a stream uh, to work out the shallowest point across and you can even determine if it is actually going to get too deep and, and turn around in good time. So uh, very handy pieces of kit. Uh, uh, these are now a mandatory kit, uh, kit for me. Other hikers actually have shelters that use the poles as part of the structure so that they effectively save even more weight. But I still use a, a standard solo tent which I'll come on to later. But even nevertheless I'll still take these with me that they're far uh, too handy to leave behind. In terms of um, other external kit, uh, depends whether it's uh, uh, winter or not. Uh, in the winter if there's snow, I'll take an ice axe. This is a, a DMM Cirque. Uh, when people see ice axes, they immediately think of the movies and they kind of see, they think about people hanging off the side of sheer cliffs with these ice axes dug into them. And, and whilst there are people out there that do do that kind of thing, I'm not one of them. I, I use my ice axe uh, primarily for hiking uh, and its prime job uh, as a hiker on uh, snow slopes is firstly to prevent you slipping and secondly to arrest a fall should you slip. Uh, there are very various ways of arresting your fall with this and any way you can get proficient at it is with practice but in snowy conditions on the hills this is an essential item. Also handy for breaking through uh, ice encrusted um, tines and things to get hold of water if you need it uh, and you can cut snow steps with it as well uh, should you need to. So. For winter and the snow, you, you really do need a nice axe. Um, other winter kit, if I know there's going to be a lot of snow, I'll take these uh, the G10 Grivel crampons. Oops, there go. Uh, they're very sharp and pointy, so have to be a bit careful here. Now, my boots, they're not full on winter boots, so these aren't the kind of crampons that just clip on. Uh, instead, these use uh, a special strap system, which means that they'll fit all my boots. And uh, I've only ever practiced putting them on. I've never had to use them in anger yet, because I've never come across icy uh, 
conditions that warrant their use. But in the winter, if I know I'm going to be uh, in snow or ice, I always take these because uh, you probably end up in situations where where you'll need them. Now that this entire uh, box actually, I strap it onto the side of the rucksack using various straps so it stays external. Uh, another item of winter kit that I'll use, uh, and, I, and I have used these, uh, quite handy. Uh, they're like mini crampons. Um, uh, these are actually Pogo micro spikes. And what they do, they this rubberized bit fits over your boot. You can see some dirt on there. And these spikes are very slipping, and uh, I found them incredibly effective. Even on fairly icy surfaces, it stopped you slipping, despite the fact the spikes are quite short. Uh, and for most icy conditions, these will suffice. Uh, you only really need to get the full crampons out uh, for, I guess, the deeper snow and ice. At one point in my um, hiking career, I did actually use a helmet when I was out in the snow and ice. This is a uh, an Elios uh, helmet by Petzl. Uh, a lot of people recommend these, especially if you're hill scrambling. Um, I'm in two minds about it. I'm not entirely sure whether, uh, for this, the kind of things that I do, whether it's worth taking. Uh, so um, the jury's still out on that. But a lot of people swear by these. Uh, other external items kit, uh, boots, of course. I use a, an incredibly lightweight set of boots, Solomon 4Ds. Uh, contrary to what the manufacturer will tell you, they leak like a sieve. Uh, they're, they're, they're kind of waterproof for about 19 to 20 kilometres and then they just leak big time. Now you're probably thinking, why haven't I gone and replaced these? And the, the reason why I haven't replaced them is these are the only boots I've ever worn where I, I can go hiking for four or five days and not get any blisters. And that's even without plaster protection so they're exceedingly comfortable and for me I'd much rather have wet feet than blistered feet it's a, I guess it's a bit of a lifestyle choice so uh, yeah I, I really do like these boots moving on to uh, the external pockets on this particular rucksack there are two belt pockets and in there I keep my um, a daily snack allowance. Uh, uh, each food pocket will generally have two cake bars and four of these cereal bars. And each of these uh, packets holds two bars. And uh, I tend to use this instead of the uh, traditional gorp, the old uh, peanuts and raisins. So I find this much more convenient. I actually prefer it. Um, so for a normal day, I'll, I'll have. Uh, eight of these bars and uh, four of these per day and easily available from these front pockets so as soon as I feel a bit tired I can just sit down undo the zip, leave the rucksack on, don't even have to take it off and immediately start munching on uh, some food so uh, that's very, uh, that's very handy right, let's open up the rucksack and show some of the other kit I carry let's start with the uh, lid In the lid, in terms of electronics, I always carry a phone. Uh, the phone I use is a BlackBerry. Uh, now, the thing with the uh, BlackBerry, uh, when I'm actually out and about, I actually take the battery out uh, and leave it off. Uh, and in that way, if I genuinely need this in an emergency, I know I'm going to have uh, enough battery power left to, to utilise it. But, all my kit uh, of electrical nature stored in these plastic bags uh, to prevent uh, them getting wet. Another item of kit that I always take with me is a Kobo ebook reader. Incredibly small, incredibly light. I think it weighs in at about sort of 300 grams, so it's very light. Battery seems to last forever, and it's just nice to be able to uh, when you're in your tent, especially on a long. Uh, summer nights or even the short winter nights when you've got your head lamp on. It's just nice to lie there and have a read of a book. Very uh, handy piece of kit. Another thing I okay, carry, even if I'm doing a day walk, I'll always take a head torch with me. Uh, my head torch of choice is this uh, Petzl RXP. It's 
and it basically goes over the top of that. Uh, there are numerous reasons why I went for the RXP. Uh, one of them is a long battery life, but the, the other reason, it takes AA batteries, and there aren't many um, headlamps that take AA batteries. The reason why AA batteries are so important for me is because my GPS also uses AA batteries. So by ensuring that all my kit uses the same size batteries, it, it firstly means that I can carry a lot less batteries with me in terms of spares. It also gives me a lot more flexibility in the field. If for some reason I decide I need lights and the batteries here have failed, I might decide to actually pull them out of the GPS to power the lamp, or vice versa. Maybe it turns out that oh, I desperately need a GPS and for whatever reason the batteries and GPS have failed, I can pull some batteries out of the lamp and pop them into the GPS. So I think it's vitally important to try and, uh, and harmonise uh, uh, any batteries that you use. I've used this Petzl lamp on numerous occasions on night walks and it's been well really awesome. It has three or four programmable settings. On the beam you, you can see uh, literally uh, up to about 100 meters on max brightness and when you're in camp I normally set it to its lowest brightness level and stick up the diffuser. So battery seems to last an age on this. Uh, I tend to use one set of batteries for the, an entire four or five day walk and they're still as strong as ever at the end of the walk so I don't really know how long they last. So I, I always take a head torch with me because you never know uh, when you might need it. Another item I always take with me, which I can't really show you, is the, uh, it's a Sony um, S8, SH9 uh, uh, camera, which fits in here. The reason I can't show you it is because it's actually filming uh, me right now. Uh, I'm, I tend to take a lot of photos, and I mean a lot of photos, because um, uh, I post them up to Facebook and they kind of form almost um, a hiking journal. Uh, uh, so I kind of take a photo every 100 metres or so, which it, it's probably a little bit too excessive, but it means that at a later date I can look at a journey and, and take a virtual walk just by uh, following all the photos. It also means that when it comes to the blog, uh, there's bounds of me one or two good photos amongst the uh, hundreds that I take. Other items that I have in here, although uh, I've got a stove in here and that has its own igniter but I still carry uh, means of producing uh, fire. I carry standard matches but I also carry uh, special waterproof and windproof matches as well. Uh, so far touch wood I've not had to use either of these, the uh, igniter on the stove has been just fine. My survival knife which I also have in here after that later also has a, a flint and steel built into it so uh, again I have many ways of, um, of producing fire I guess. I used to carry a special lighter design for hiking, but I found that the minute it gets cold, sort of, you know, sort of 